we must go now. Papa! Tiago, go with your mother to the trap. Take this. It will always be your guide. Yes, Papa. We will join you shortly. Shabir, the painting! A malediction. This way. Senora, it is too late. Go. No, Papa. Senor, in here. Search them. Of course. Paris in the spring. Passion, romance, l'amour. I was working in art insurance. It paid the rent, just about. And then, by chance, I met Nico at a private view. You didn't tell me that you were back in Paris, George. We should catch up. Let's have... Lunch? Nobody move! No, monsieur! Not la malédiction! Oh. Stay back. Once again, Paris had shown me her dark side. A brutal robbery, a senseless murder. Nico and I were about to be drawn into a new and terrifying adventure together. The gallery owner was dead. I guess sometimes playing the hero doesn't pay. My company had insured the exhibition, so I had a crime to solve. The cops would be here soon. I didn't have much time. Sixty thousand for a sketch? Ouch. The stolen painting was called La Maledexio, painted by someone called El Serp in 1937. The stolen painting was worth less than the others. So why did the thief target it? The alarm still worked on that painting. I wondered why the stolen painting's alarm hadn't sounded. This was where the stolen painting had hung. Why that painting? And why kill for it? The stolen painting had an alarm, which should have sounded when the painting was removed. I needed to find out why it hadn't. I pressed the vibration detector pad. Nothing happened. I pressed the vibration detector pad. Nothing happened. I pressed the vibration detector pad. I pressed the vibration detector pad. It was the speaker cone for the alarm. It hadn't sounded when the painting was stolen. Looked fine to me. That wasn't the reason the alarm didn't go off. So, the alarm wasn't broken. I suspected foul play.
It was a small red button. So that was why the alarm hadn't sounded. A wire had been cut by someone who knew exactly what they were doing. This was an inside job. Just 90,000 for this one. That bust was pretty impressive. I wondered who'd been the model. The bust was balanced precariously on the pedestal. I didn't want to knock it off. The door was marked private. The door was locked with a keypad. The wires from the camera ran into the room behind. It must have captured the whole robbery. If I could get the code to the keypad, I might be able to shed some light on the crime. The cable for the camera ran into the room marked private. It was a blob of chewed gum. The murderer left a pizza box on the table. The thief left the pizza box behind. I wondered what was in it. Well, no surprise there, pizza. The guy must have been hungry. There was only one slice left. No one had noticed the pizza box fall onto the floor. I decided to leave it alone. Another painting with a working alarm. The priest was giving last rites to the gallery owner. I didn't want to interfere. It was Hector Lane, France's greatest art critic. We'd met before. It hadn't ended well. For a moment, I thought he was dead. But from the snoring, I guessed he'd only fainted. I picked up a piece of pizza from the gallery floor. It could be useful. Even unconscious Lane's body reacted to food. It was going to take something stronger than pizza to wake Lane. Lane was out cold. I was going to need something to bring him around.
Excuse me, Father. Yes, my son. I'm George Stobart. My company insured the exhibition. My name is Simeon. Is there anything I can do? You can pray for his soul. A senseless murder. On the contrary, this killing makes plenty of sense. What do you mean? A great evil has taken place. This is the work of the devil. What? I am a Dominican priest. I know these things. And now, excuse me, I must pray. One minute I've been planning dinner with Nico. The next I was talking art theft, murder, and the devil with a priest. I always wondered who bought those white framed glasses. Now I knew. He definitely looked better. There was no way anyone would have survived that. I didn't want Henri's blood on my hands. A small purple nozzle was poking out of his pocket. In Henri's pocket was a tiny bottle. It was a bottle of Brett. The label claimed it would wake the beast within. Poor guy. Hair today, gone tomorrow. I put the glasses back where they were. Best to leave the evidence the way I found it. I decided to let Henri's toupee rest in peace. The poster looked old. I didn't want to touch it. Spanish modernists certainly didn't come cheap. Lane's jacket was stretched tight over his flabby form. A pair of nail clippers protruded from Lane's pocket. In the pocket was a pair of nail clippers. They were monogrammed with the letters HL. Time to awaken the beast. <coughs> what? 